All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Cacti Telescopes Continued, which is currently being maintained by forum user Angel125, who you may remember is the developer behind the Buffalo Rover we took a look at not too long ago, as well as Pathfinder, which we looked at quite a while ago. But I say maintained it is currently being maintained by angel 125 as this mod has basically passed through the hands of multiple users at this point it was originally designed by user rubber ducky way back in the day and then was handed over to forum user raven to continue development and has now been taken over by angel 125 who will also hopefully continue development and maintenance of the mod. And yeah, so it's had a bit of a history. And what this particular mod looks to add into the game, as the name may suggest, it's, well, telescopes. And specifically, telescopes with an interesting sort of uh, upgradability and modularity to them, which is quite intriguing. We'll talk about that more in a moment in the VAB, but first... We have this lovely button here. Now this is the mod configuration menu for this, and it gives you a few basic small options, the first of which being enabling or disabling debug mode. We'll leave that on just in case anything goes wonky. And then the next two options we have here are to make life a little bit easier, or subsequently, if you leave them on, keep life a little bit more difficult and potentially a bit more fun. So the first is to enable sun damage to the telescope, which we'll talk about again more in a minute. And then the second is enable gyroscope decay over time again, which we'll talk about momentarily. But if you turn these off, it'll make your life a lot easier because you don't have to deal with them. But if you leave them on, it makes it so that, well, you got something more interesting to do in the game and also something to watch out for. But yes, that is the configuration menu. And you may notice we are actually in a science mode in the game instead of our usual sandbox. Because, of course, this is a science-based mod, so I figured, what the heck, we'll look at the tech tree real quick. And just briefly, I'm not going to go too in-depth, but what I have selected here in the tech tree is what you need to get all of the different tele telescope parts for this particular mod. The most advanced of which being the experimental science here. And yeah, I, you, I believe you get the first, yes, the first telescope here at Space Exploration. So it doesn't take you too long to get your first space telescope. And then you just sort of develop it along from there and get more cool parts. But yes, that is the tech tree. So on to the VAB to take a gander at the parts that actually make all of this possible. And the first of which that we have is... A probe core, the Smobodobodyne Slim. Oh, I probably didn't say that right in the slightest. But yes, this is a very interesting little probe core because it is basically, as the description mentions here, just a sort of slimmed down version of the popular Probodobodyne QBE, which of course is this unmanned command pod that we have right here. It's essentially just a squished down cheaper version that has very similar things to it, but it doesn't have the uh, reaction wheel. It has SAS, it has electric charge, it has, well, the nature of being an unmanned command pod, but it doesn't have that torque that you should be able to have with a normal reaction wheel. And of course, being a slimmed down version, it's, uh, you know, lighter and cheaper for you to use and the idea behind not having any torque on this thing is because the next parts that we have to look at here in command and control we don't have anything in fuel tanks we don't have anything in engines but next in command and control is where you find two different gyroscope reaction wheel units and these are pretty cool they are you know just little reaction wheels essentially that you can you know adjust the sensitivity on also you can adjust the lifetime of them on because again you may remember that option we had earlier that i mentioned which was you know, the decay of the gyroscopes. These, over time, will get worse. So eventually, you'll have to replace them 
using with uh, the Kerbal inventory system in mind for replacement. Uh, that is sort of the idea you would have the Kerbal attachment system and the Kerbal inventory system installed. And when the gyroscopes failed, you'd send a mission up and take the old gyroscopes off, put new gyroscopes on, and have fun with it. And that... That's pretty cool. And now the difference between the two different reaction wheels, besides the lovely green or pink, or uh, no, that's not pink, that's purple, color. Oh boy, I'm going colorblind now too, besides not being able to read things. Lovely. But the difference between them is, well, the lifespan. The smaller GRU-1000 has a lifespan of 100 days, normal torque of 5, fully reduced torque of 1, and requires electricity of 24 per minute. Now, the larger model, the GRU-2000, has a lifespan of 200 days, normal torque of 5, fully reduced torque of 0.5, which is important because you can, as I said, you can adjust the torque on these, and the lower you can get the torque, the more accurate and fine-tuned your telescope is going to be when it involves stability of looking at a distant object, which is very cool. And, of course, the electrical charge on this one is a requirement of 18 per minute, so a bit more efficient than the 1,000 and a bit nicer. Uh, but, of course, more than double the cost if you are in a career game. This one's 2,000 cost. This is only 900. And uh, though the lifespan is much nicer. Now, let's check these things off and then head down to Structural, where we will find two different parts for this. And the first is the Cacti Telescope Service Bay. Now this allows you a space to store things on your telescope and add in different modules. So if we open up this bay, for instance, you could add in those lovely little gyroscopes. You could pop them into here so that, uh, you know, they're nice and out of the way visually. But more importantly are these, the Cacti Telescope Processor Mounts. Now this is how you upgrade your telescope. I mentioned before that your telescopes can be a bit modular and can be upgraded, and that is thanks to these. You add one of these processor mounts in here, and what happens is you add into this a processing unit, and there are different levels of processing units that allow your telescope to do different things. We'll talk about those momentarily, but you pop them into there, and then once again, through the Kerbal Inventory System slash Kerbal Attachment System, you can have a Kerbal come up here, open up the bay, take out one module, and then pop a new one in to upgrade your telescope, and that is freaking awesome. And then, okay, that's it for that tab. Nothing in aerodynamics. I mean, it's a space telescope after all. Now, utility is where we find the next two things on here. And the first is the Cacti Solar Array. I love this solar panel. Besides the telescopes, this is the coolest part to me. I, you know me, I'm a sucker for animation. Unfortunately, I can't open it here in the VAB, but I'll show it to you guys when we're outside. It is a beautiful animation and a very, very nice little uh, solar panel. And then the next part we have is the service ladder, which is meant to sort of go inside here. So you'd pop that inside the container there, the service bay, and then retract the ladder to hide this thing inside here so that your Kerbal has a place to hold on to as he's fixing or upgrading the telescope. Quite cool, and you know, you could use it on other various landers, pop it onto the side of something, and you're good to go. Now, of course, last is science, because, well, this is a science-based mod, and here we have the two different telescopes, as well as those different modules that you use to upgrade the uh, telescopes with. We'll take a look at those first. Now, we have here the Cacti Asteroid Camera, number one, number two, and number three. And as you go up from number one to number two, it goes from possible science gain from 10% and a magnification of 12,800x and an electrical charge of two per second, all the way when you get to the third version to a full 100% science gain 
128,000 times magnification and an electrical charge usage of 10 per second. And with the camera 2 being, you know, somewhere in between. So the better you get with this, and of course more expensive if you are in career mode, the more science you'll gain, the higher magnification you get, and the more electricity it uses. Now you have the exact same sort of stuff here with the Cacti Wide Field Camera, uh, with the same, st well, pretty much same stats as well uh, between Camera 1 and Camera 3. Now the difference between the Asteroid Camera and the Wide Field Camera is what it can do for science. The Wide Field Cameras when they take a picture through the telescope, they are meant to take a picture of a planet or a moon. So you take a picture of a planet and it gives you science with the, how good of a picture that you take. And with the asteroids, it does the same sort of thing, but rather than planets, it's meant to take pictures of asteroids. And it also has a fun little extra activatable thing which helps you detect asteroids as well. So the wide field camera is for taking pictures and gaining science from planets. The asteroid camera is for taking pictures of asteroids and getting science from that. Now, as for the telescopes, which is the last part we have here, we have the first, the Fungi Telescope Optics, which is the smaller of the two at uh, 1.25 meters. And uh, it is quite a very cool looking camera. I love this thing. And it is meant to be used without this service bay because it doesn't need a place to attach one of those, uh, boy, what were they called exactly again? telescope processor mounts because this one has its own built-in bay right there. You can open and close this little door here and uh, pop one of these camera modules right in there. And then bam, you will now have a asteroid telescope. And you can once again, you know, take a Kerbal up there and fly him over here, take that out, and then replace it with uh, a wide field camera whenever you so desire. And then you just close the door and you're good to go. So this is made to be an all-in-one unit. And yeah, of course, its aperture always being on. It has no way to close itself, but let's pump this thing back up here. And yeah, quite, quite a nice little camera and of course, or telescope rather, and of course much cheaper at a cost of only 7500 So this is your entry level camera into things. Now if we pop this baby off and get the far, far more expensive 50000 cost camera. This is the Cacti Telescope Optical Tube. And this baby is gigantic and I love it. Very nice texturing, very nice modeling on it. It does more or less require the service bay because again, you're gonna want these processing units hidden in here nicely. And uh, yeah, this one, you can open up the aperture, which is quite convenient because when you're not taking pictures, you can close the aperture and that protects the camera from the sun because no matter which one of these telescopes you use whether it be the fungi or the cacti if you point it at the sun it will destroy the optics so that was that other option we had in the config menu so if we point at this uh, this fungi telescope if it gets pointed at the sun it'll eventually break because it can't be staring at the sun and that's the problem with the fungi. You gotta pretty much make sure that it's in some form of orbit that is never going to look at the sun, which is tricky. But again, that's why it's the entry level one. This much larger telescope can close its aperture, protecting it from the damage of the sun. And so yeah, it can just close and when you need to take a picture, you open it up and there you go. So that is how you work these things basically. So let's exit here and go over to the tracking station where I've got two of these babies already in orbit and oh boy they're fun so let's grab the fungi first and go to fly and take just a few basic looks at it so first and foremost I did say I was gonna show you these lovely lovely solar panels let's just uh, right click retract and look at it oh it's beautiful it's it's, it's beautiful it just it rolls up the solar panels and then folds in. Ah, uh, you know me, I'm a sucker for good animation and that is just, that is just beautiful. <laughs>
Oh, I really do like it. It's it's a really good solar panel too. It uh, gets quite a nice amount of power, and overall, just a just a nice glorious little thing. But yes, here is a fungi, which is quite a fun little telescope. I do like this smaller version, uh, as it is, of course, quite maneuverable when you have a couple of these little gyroscope refract reaction wheels on here, which you can already see. Their lifespan is way the crap down because I basically have them orbiting forever, uh, trying to you know take some images and get some fun asteroid science. Because... Like I mentioned earlier in the VAB, besides just being able to take pictures with this camera, you can engage the asteroid scanner, turn that on, and what this will do is while it's engaged and using a little bit extra power, it will help you find more asteroids. So it'll scan around in immediate space and help locate more asteroids that you can then go and track. And then once you do, have a asteroid that you're quite interested in to track. What you just need to do is, well, let's close this bay first. Go to the map where I should have an asteroid ready to be tracked. Right there, set that as target. And once you have it set as target, oh God, are we, oh no, we, yeah, it'll, it, it should still be visible. Yeah, we should be good. Once you have it set as target, you control from your optics, and then, you know, just line up with the target. So it should be over there-ish. Excellent. So that should roughly point us to the right location. And then toggle the GUI. Now you'll notice when we're in here, that's our asteroid that we're trying to look at. And we can zoom all the way in. Oh boy. I don't know if we're actually going to have time to see it because you have to fine-tune this stuff as well. And that may very well be a very tiny asteroid. And you'll notice we're getting a pretty smooth tracking to try and line up with it using the SAS and having it line up on target. And that's because of the gyro sensitivity. That's the beauty of those little gyroscopes that you add to the outside. We can adjust their sensitivity in here. So we adjust the magnification of our telescope here. And we adjust the sensitivity of our gyroscopes here and of course the the higher you put this the more finicky it's going to be so it's trying to stay roughly on target you can see it's shaking because it's trying to use too much torque but if you lower the amount of torque down to all the way the zero percent really it's much more smooth we can zoom in more and it will track a target much nicer and not get that bounce now, if we, we're going to have to zoom all the way in because this is a tiny, tiny little asteroid, so I don't think we're actually going to be able to properly see it, at least in the given amount of time. But yeah, that's basically how you operate this thing. And then once you do have it in a good location, you'll notice we have a little button here. And this button is what you click to actually do the science. Now that is why we have the debug menu on right now. That seems to be borked at the moment. It may be something I've done because I did have this functioning earlier. So, uh, you know, take that with a grain of salt there. But this button, once you hit it, is when you will get science. Now that should function properly when we go to the uh, other telescope that we have as the planets are definitely not quite as finicky as asteroids. But before we do, let's break the telescope. So let's point this baby at the sun. <laughs> Never do this with a telescope. Oh boy, oh boy, come on. Point at the sun. There we go, and this eventually, over time, will destroy our uh, telescope lens here because it is taking damage from seeing the sun. Now we can actually do that or uh, speed along the process a bit more. If you actually start on the launch pads uh, with the aperture of the main telescope open, uh, this one is a little bit more forgiving. It'll take it a while for the light to actually damage it, but it will over time get damaged and this little thing in here, there it goes. Oh, okay, so I needed to open up the sun optics there. And boom, it exploded because, well, it got fried from looking at the sun. So that is what you don't want to do. Yeah. So let's switch on over to our other telescope that we have. It took me there to remember the word telescope. What the hell? 
<laughs> and here we are at the cacti one, which is quite nice. Let's make the moon. Actually, yes, the moon is our target already because I was playing around with this before. Beautiful. So we have the aperture currently open. Oh boy, oh boy, close aperture. <laughs> I didn't notice that, that's not a good thing. Oh, I hope it didn't look at the sun while it was on rail. So control from here, let's set it to spin around to its target. And you can see I, I kind of left the bay open in here. And you'll notice we have two different modules in here. I've got an asteroid module as well as one of the wide view modules. So we can actually set up a telescope with both of them. Unlike with the fun guy who only has that one attachment point, with this service bay you could have multiples. So that is quite cool. So now that we are appointed at the moon, I'm just gonna close this up. It's, it's gonna bother me if it's still open. And open up our aperture. And then toggle the GUI. And there we go, we are pointing at the moon and we can zoom in on it. Oh, there we go, beautiful, beautiful moon. And again, you can adjust the sensitivity of the gyros on here. And you'll notice we've got a couple more buttons down here now. This one is still the button to do the science. So if we click that, boom, there we go. And this is what we should have gotten for the asteroid. And as I said, I have gotten this previously when I was playing around with it. Uh, I just must have done something while making this video that screwed it up. But yeah, this is what you should get, and it would just be the asteroid instead, and you could transmit the science, and you're good to go. Now, we also have this button immediately next to it on the right, and this just takes a screen grab of your moon and creates a PNJ in the folder. And then we have these two arrow icons on either side. Now this allows me to switch between the two different processors that I have installed in that service bay. So right now you can see we're on the wide field camera number three. And if I hit this button here, it switches to the asteroid camera, which you'll notice did change the uh, field of view here, or the view here. It desaturated because the asteroid cameras are only black and white, whereas the wide field cameras do seem to have color, which is quite cool. But yeah, you just use these two to switch back and forth between them, and it all works fine and dandy. And yeah, that... That's how you use the telescope mod. It's pretty pretty nice, not too difficult. Uh, you just click, gain science, take picture, adjust gyro sensitivity and magnification, and if you want, take PNJ files. All good fun times, and hopefully more will come soon. Now, it is already compatible with a lot of different mods. For instance, it actually is recommended that you have distant object enhancement installed. I didn't because I wanted to see on this video what it looked like without it. It is, of course, already uh, used with the Kerbal Inventory System so that you can upgrade your uh, telescopes and fix them, etc. Uh, hopeful future enhancements that the mod maintenance or maintainer is wanting to do is integration with research bodies, with uh, asteroid day stuff, with outer planet mods, uh, ground-based telescopes perhaps in the future, and of course more different kinds of cameras so we can pop different things into the service bay and into these uh, different little uh, containers. So yeah, a very fun mod. I always love any of these mods that add in telescopes because it is just, it's, it's a fun little addition. And who doesn't like being able to look at planets far away through a telescope? It's cool in real life and it's equally as fun in this game. So yeah, that is going to be it for today's episode. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do go and check out the mod, link in the description as always. And yeah, if you do make any fun, cool telescopes, I of course would love to see them. But yeah, that is going to be it, so I hope you have enjoyed, you come back for the next, but until then, thank you for watching my friends, and as always... Have a good one. Now I'm going to go take pictures of more planets, etc. Because it's, it's just fun. Later, folks.